Hello, everybody. Oh, that's still kind of low there. Let's see, do this. Is that better? Let's see. Oh, yeah, it's better. Hello, everybody. Happy Tuesday. We've got three people on right now. Hello. Oh, okay. I hope you guys are having a good start to your week. Uh, it is Tuesday. We had, uh, had a pretty good start to the week. No complaints here, really. Um, and we are here today for part nine of our Dobby cardigan that's coming along very nicely. Here we go. See? Dobby cardigan. There we go. So we are working on the sleeves today. I would love to know. I'm going to give you guys a little while to hop on. We've got five people here now. Hello, everybody. Hi, Dawn. Glad to have you. I've got my coffee. Even though it's noon. Gotta have coffee. Have it all day. I try to stop drinking coffee by like two or three o'clock. <laughs> but that's, that's about all I can manage. Oh, oh, I wanted to show you guys. I got a new rug. Let's see if I can move it enough for you guys to actually see. Oh, let's see if this works. Yep. Yeah. See my new rug? Woo woo. I'm super excited about it. Um, it's not as bright pink as I thought it would be, which is okay. You know, got my bright pink shorts on today. All the pink, all the pink today. Uh, but yeah, got my new rug. Um, I think that over time it'll probably fade. So it might be a little more pink, like a lighter pink once it starts to fade a little bit, but, um, but I love it. I think it's fun. And my husband says that it looks like it has little aliens and little runes on it. So he likes it too. It's a little funky. Um, but yeah, I was going to give everybody some time to join in before I get started, uh, on this is part nine and part eight of the Dobby cardigan. We, I tried to start the sleeves and I realized that I did not sew up enough on the side seams to have space for uh, my stitches. They were too, my, my um, openings were too wide. Um, and so I actually went back in and sewed up a little bit. And I did not do that on the other side. So I'm actually going to do that really quick. Let's see. Oh yeah, I did not do it on this side. So I'm going to do that really quick. And let's see if I can show y'all here. Yeah, so you can see how this side is sewn up higher than this side. So I'm about to use mattress stitch and a little piece of yarn and I'm going to sew this up so that it's shorter. And then I am going to uh, flip the camera around and go back around the sleeve uh, to help, you know, anyone, especially if someone's watching the replay and they're not as familiar with my patterns or they're super beginner, they can see how I do that. But I'm going to do that really quick while everybody's joining in. And um, I would love to know how your week is going, what you're working on. If you are not working on the Dobby cardigan, or if you are, let me know where you're at. I know I do have a few people that I've seen who are kind of following along. You may have already finished another one. Um, I've been interrupting my crochet alongs with my Instagram interviews the past couple of Fridays. So this one has extended out a little bit longer, um, but that's okay. You know, it happens. All right. So I need a tapestry needle and a small section of yarn. Let's see if I can find, okay, here we go. Yes. Yeah, so I'm just going to do like a little, little section of yarn. And of course there's no scissors in there. Let's see. I've got some over here. Okay. I also got some new yarn that I can share with you guys. I'm pretty excited about. Um, if you have been following me on Instagram, I can't remember if I shared it here on YouTube, uh, but my newest cardigan pattern, that's like the t-shirt yarn cardigan, uh, that company sent me some more yarn. Um, so I'm really excited to share that because um, uh, some of it is also t-shirt yarn and it's just a different style, a different pattern. But then I also got some ribbon yarn by Hooked. So 
I have used um, uh, Hobie's ribbon yarn, but I've never used hooked hooks, hooked brands ribbon yarn. Um, and you can find that. So I was going to tell you guys, if you order anything from hooked, it's going to be really expensive. They are in Portugal um, and the shipping fees are pretty bad. Uh, they're pretty high, um, but their yarn is great. And you can actually find their yarn on Lovecrafts, the website Lovecrafts. Um, and so you can check them out because they have the hooked ribbon yarn. They have the hooked t-shirt yarn. So they provide, uh, they, their shipping prices are much better. So you could get more. I don't think they have the different prints, um, but they have some of the solid t-shirt yarn colors and they have the ribbon yarn. So definitely check them out. I also posted a new blog um, that is all about ribbon yarn and I have not had a chance to share it anywhere yet. And I think I'm going to do a little video of it. Um, and I'm going to start, I'm sewing this up as we, as we chat, um, see how high up I need to go for this. Let's see. Oh, but yes. Yeah, so I did a blog post about ribbon yarn and it is a, uh, pattern roundup and kind of just my thoughts on ribbon yarn. So if you have some ribbon yarn or you've never tried it, um, it is definitely one of my favorite yarns, uh, yarn types to use during the summer, because as you guys know, I pretty much exclusively stick with bulky and super bulky yarn. Uh, and so it's kind of hard to find yarn that really works for the warmer months and it still be bulky or super bulky. Yeah. So, um, I am going to share, I think I'm going to do a roundup of different yarn that I'm using this year. Um, Cindra's here, Nancy's here, just saying hello. Hey! <laughs> um, I think I'm going to do another yarn roundup, uh, another super bulky yarn roundup for my favorite summer yarns. It'll probably be similar to the one I did last year. There's a YouTube video here on my channel um, about some of the best super bulky yarns to use in the summer. Um, I also made my own eye cord using multiple strands of um, Lily Sugar and Cream, which is a four weight cotton. It's pretty cool. Now it's really thick because it's an I cord, but I'm going to try it. I've got to make something out of it. And I'll show you guys that too at the end of this video. I, I probably need to do a separate video of, of my yarn haul. I think that would be good. So maybe I'll do that, uh, this afternoon and post it. And then I can really go through it. I'll probably show you guys a little bit here, uh, before we go. Uh, but I can do a separate one and kind of walk through what I'm working with. I'm also considering doing, um, doing a, if you guys saw my Romping Willow overalls, I'm considering doing another set of overalls, uh, with t-shirt yarn and trying to modify it to make it a skirt, which I've already had people do that with my original pattern. So I don't think I'm going to release a whole separate pattern uh, for that, but I want to try it. Uh, and I got, I got about halfway through the bottoms uh, of the overalls. Uh, I started, I started a pair and um, it was a little, it was working up so thick that I needed more space for the skirt. So I'm going to have to start over, which really sucks. I didn't want to have to frog that whole thing, but, um, that's part of, part of the life, crochet life. Okay. So it looks like I've got that all sewn up. Um, and if you, uh, are joining in, if you were not here for the last one, um, you can watch part eight and see how I troubleshoot the sleeves openings being too big. Okay, so I actually started the sleeve in the last video and I tried to match up the number of stitches that I was supposed to have, which I think was 22. And I had room for like 26 stitches. It was just too big to even try to get around it and just, you know, do some decreases. So I actually went in and sewed up a little bit more of that side seam to make the arm openings smaller. So now it should match up. Okay. 
All right, let me make sure I didn't miss any comments. Um, no, you guys love the rug. Thank you, Kimberly. Uh, and like I said, I see that Nancy and Dawn and Cinder are all here. And Ellen, of course, is here being the wonderful admin that she is. Um, okay, so I am going to flip the camera around real quick. It won't be too long. I just want to get the first row of the sleeve down. So if someone is watching the replay or if you are following along today, you can really see how I pick those stitches up because I know for some people that can feel a little intimidating when you're just starting out. Um, if you have never made uh, garments before, that can be something just picking up the stitches can feel a little more um, uh, intimidating than the other parts of the cardigan. Okay, so I've got my cardigan laid out flat and I just need to flip the camera around. So bear with me while I do that. Let's actually flip the lens first. Okay, and then we are going to do that. Flip you here and up. Looky there, that is definitely getting easier and easier as I practice that transition, especially on the live. Okay, so as you guys can see, got the hood here, body of the cardigan. I've got a whole nother project that I'm working on right here that is going to come this way. I have not shared that one either. That's one that um, I'm working on one of the new Hobie challenges, the Here Comes the Sun challenge. You can see one of my posts on Instagram about it. Um, but, uh, I'm working on something new for that and I'll get to share that in, I think two weeks I'm going to share or a week or two. I'm going to share what I'm working on. Okay. The way that I like to do this is I pull the cardigan over to the side like this so that I can really see what I'm doing. I'm going to join into a stitch right here at the armpit. Okay. And since we're doing half double crochet stitches around, I'm going to join with a slip stitch. All right, so make my slip knot, insert my hook first, insert my hook into this space right next to the armpit. I try to go underneath at least two strands of yarn. And then I'm going to bring my yarn over here and yarn over, which I know that always looks weird, but yarn over, pull up my loop, and then pull through the loop that was already on my hook. So now I've got my slip stitch. I am joined into that space. I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to place a half double crochet stitch into the same space that I joined into right here. Okay. All right. So yarn over, put my hook through, pull up my loop, got three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all three. That is my first half double crochet stitch uh, for my sleeve. All right. And I'm going to pick the stitches up around. Now, one of the things that I said uh, in the last video that you can do is hold your sleeve um, lined up like this and place a stitch marker at the very top. If I could put that through there. If I can get it through an actual, <laughs> an actual stitch here. There we go. Okay, so I'm placing that right at the top. And if we look at the instructions again, like I said, I did show this in the last one, but this is adding the sleeves. This that's crossed out should be this, okay? This should be the same as this right here, um, but I had, this was old, old sizing from the first time I released this and I've ex expanded the sizing since, so. All right, so I actually need, I'm working on, one, two, I'm working on the third one here, 26 stitches around. So I should have 13, let's see, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I should be able to place 13 stitches across this side, and then I can place 13 stitches across the other side for the total of 26, all right? Okay, so let's do it. All right, we've got two. three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, and I think I'm putting those too close. So that's eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, so these are too close together. And you can kind of see how they look a little crowded there. So I'm gonna come back. I feel like I'm having more trouble with this because I am live <laughs> and have people watching. All right, so we're gonna do, here, let me take this out. Let's go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that's looking good. Oop, 10, 11, 12, I think we're gonna make it. <laughs> and 13 should be right up next to my cat stitch marker. Okay, there we go. So you can see that's 13 stitches across one side. Now I need to place 13 stitches across the other. And keep in mind, if you're hanging in here with me, um, I'm only gonna be counting and placing these for this first row, and then I'll flip that camera back around and we can chat a little bit more. But um, I wanted people to actually see, because like I said, even you guys saw, I had some issues trying to place these this time. And so I know when someone's first starting out with a pattern like this, this can be frustrating. So don't get frustrated. You know, you can frog it back, try again. You can even kind of place stitch markers across here. You could even place 13 stitch markers before you start doing that if you want to, just to kind of help you with the placement and not get frustrated. So I'm gonna flip this around now to the other side. I don't get everything tangled up here. There we go. All right, I'm gonna remove the stitch marker. And I'm going to try to place 13 down the next side for a total of 26. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. eight, nine, 10, 11. Yep, 12 and 13 are gonna go here and here as I've now run out of <laughs> slack on my yarn. All right, so 12. And 13. Okay, finally. All right, I have finally successfully <laughs> been able to place my 26 stitches around. And then once you get here, you are going to join into this very first half double crochet stitch underneath these two pieces of yarn, that V right there. I'm gonna place my hook underneath there, yarn over, whoop, pull it through, pull through this loop on my hook, tighten that up a little bit, chain one, and I'm ready to start my sleeves. Now, this is interesting. Um, when you are using half double crochet stitches like this, you have three working loops. This is here, this first one, one here as number two, and then one back here is the third loop. Okay, when you're working the sleeves on this cardigan, you're working in the round and you're not turning, all right? So I'm not going to chain one, turn my work and work into the backside of these, all right? I'm just continuing around working in the outside of my yarn, all right? 
What's interesting though, is you have two options when you're making these sleeves. Both of them will create a different look. The first one is working underneath this first, these first two loops. All right, this one and this one. Okay, and let me show you, I'll do a few of them so you guys can see the difference. Let me work five like this, because this is how I'm gonna do the, these sleeves, but you do have another option if you want a different look. Okay. All right, this is what it looks like when you work into those first two loops. Now, you also have the option to skip this first loop right here, this one. If you skip this one and you work underneath the next one and then this third loop back here, I'm gonna do that for a few of these. Oh, that was a single crochet. Let's do a double crochet. Okay, working into those back two loops. All right, so can you see the difference? You've got a ridge forming right here, okay? This one does not. So you do have an option to create a different look with your sleeves very easily by working into the back two loops instead of the front two loops, all right? But I am gonna work into the front two and continue this way, okay? All right, now I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera around again so that I can see you guys. There you are. All right, and let's turn it this way again because that's easier for me. And let me make sure you guys can see me okay. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Hello again. All right, let me make sure. Let's see, Cinder had to reorder the yarn. Oh, yeah, I know. It shipped yesterday again. You know, Lion Brand Yarn sent my um, yarn to Texas one time. Sent it to, entirely to the wrong address. And then when I asked if they could send me out new yarn, they were out of the yarn I ordered. So, yeah, that was no fun. What's really interesting is that um, I actually posted the fact that they had shipped my wrong yarn to the wrong place on, in a Facebook group I was in for crochet. And I found the person who uh, got my yarn order. How crazy is that? Small world. Um, they did not send it to me because it was a big box. So that would have been ridiculous. And Lion Brand Yarn was like, you can just keep it, you know. So they got free yarn. Um, yeah. Uh, camera is so good and clear. Yay, Nancy. I'm so glad because this is just on my phone. So it's that's so good to know that it's good on my phone. Um, Emma says, hi, pinkies. My precious yarnery is here. Hello. Uh, Cinder said I had to put stitch markers all the way around my sleeve the other day to get it to come out right. And it's true. Like Ellen said, you got to do what works for you. Um, it can feel silly, I think, because I've had to do that to keep count of things. You can't be up here, bud. You shake the whole camera. Y'all want to say hello to the cat? There he is. That's little man. Yes. So loving. But he loves to get up on here and look out the window. If you guys have joined in on any of my lives before, you have probably seen him. Um, but he shakes the whole table when he jumps up here. So, And my camera is attached to a computer monitor arm attached to this table. And this is just one of those folding craft tables. So uh, not very stable. Um, I'm definitely planning on... As I upgrade this office space, I want to get a nicer, more stable desk that's gonna go here instead of this folding craft table. Um, Cause that will make my camera a lot more stable when I'm trying to film, film things with my nicer camera. Winter Nightmare is here. Hello, thank you for joining in. We are on part nine of my live crochet along for the Dobby cardigan. Um, and just so you guys know, if you're just joining in, um, even though this is part nine, I have an entire playlist dedicated to these, um, to this crochet along. So if you want to start from the beginning and crochet a cardigan along with me, um, you can do that now, just going into the playlist for this. And I also have a playlist for my Luna cardigan. 
Um, so that's really nice. And I feel like it's more of a chat time than just following along with uh, the instructions. So that's kind of nice, I think. And so far everyone says it is. So we'll keep doing them if you guys want to keep joining in. Okay. Now let me make sure I've got my counts right. Yes. Okay. So it can get a little tricky when you're doing the sleeves in the round like this um, to add or uh, leave out a stitch. So until I really get the hang of the sleeve, once I get, you know, midway through the sleeve, I like to count my stitches before I join the round. And that just helps you make sure that you have not accidentally added a stitch or left a stitch out. Uh, that's my pro tip. Uh, most of my cardigans, um, I try to make them simple enough to where even if you do, it's not going to make a huge difference. Um, it's not like you are trying to create a pattern that needs a specific number of multiples, because um, sometimes that will throw you off. If you leave a stitch out, then all of a sudden your pattern doesn't make sense anymore. It doesn't work. Um, all of mine are super simple. I am not the type of person who has the patience to be um, trying to keep uh, a count of stitches uh, for patterns and things. So um, my patterns tend to reflect that. They reflect my impatient nature. Okay, let's see. I need, I'm not center pulling, which now I'm realizing that with this yarn, it would have been a lot smarter for me to be center pulling. But I really didn't want to start with the color that was in the center, so I just pulled from the outside. And now I'm having to, uh, takes a lot longer to get it to pull out. Okay. All right. I am marking on row three of the sleeves. Okay, I haven't heard from anyone what you're working on right now. So let me know, um, even if you're not working on it as you watch this. What are your current projects? Uh, I have quite a few things that I'm working on right now. Um, the mini puff jacket, which I'm so excited about you guys. The mini puff, I've gotten fantastic reviews from my testers. They say this is going to be a winner. Um, I've had a lot of people who say that it's going to be the next Luna cardigan um, because the Luna cardigan has been such a favorite. This cat is sitting on the floor, staring up at me, like, like saying, I'm going to jump up there and I want to see you try to do something about it. <sighs> the look that he's given me, you're not going to jump up there. I'm going to lock you out of the room. Go, get, shoot, shoot, shoot. He's just going to come right back. Um, but yeah, the mini puff jacket, it's due from testers on Friday, this Friday. So I am really hoping, fingers crossed, that I can release it next week. Um, I would love to either release it this weekend or next week. It all just depends on if I have time, if I get everybody's stuff by Friday, and if I have the time on uh, Saturday and Sunday, um, or even on Friday, to actually make any adjustments to the pattern that need to be adjusted based on, you know, testers' feedback. Um... But I'm so excited about it. It's going to be so good. I, I'm, I'm really happy with that one. Um, I feel like I really hit my stride this year with designing the jacket, uh, the jacket style uh, of, of cardigans that I've been making. Because um, I released the Winky Jacket, then the Power Puff, and now the Mini Puff. Um, and those were my first really kind of jacket-esque pieces. All right, what's everybody saying? <laughs> Ellen says, no, your patterns reflect your easygoing nature. That's such a nice way to put it, Ellen. I appreciate you. <laughs> oh, we got 11 people on now. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button, guys, if you haven't. I would truly appreciate it. So glad you guys are all here. Uh, winter nightmare. My wrist hurts, so I haven't crocheted in a while, but I have a lot of whips. I am so sorry that your wrist is hurting. Um, 
I'm having that issue lately because of the t-shirt yarn that I've been working with because t-shirt yarn is, is tough on your hands. Um, it's not as bad, you know, the jacket that I created used a 19 or a 20 millimeter hook, the t-shirt yarn jacket, which is now the Angelica jacket after Angelica pickles. <laughs> um, and if you guys aren't in my Facebook group, you need to join the Facebook group because that's actually where I did the poll for you guys to help me choose the name of that pattern. So that was really fun. Uh, I really like getting to get you guys' input uh, on stuff like that. Um, but that jacket, it wasn't as bad on my wrist because I was using the 19 millimeter hook. Uh, but then I started trying to make the overalls using the t-shirt yarn and the overalls are a 15 millimeter hook. And that was even trying to make my stitches looser. Um, it wasn't happening. I was really, really struggling, uh, to not have the wrist pain. And then I'm trying to work on a new crop top design. Uh, and that calls for a 5.5 millimeter hook. So the good news is I'm jumping between hook sizes, which I feel helps me a lot when I'm having wrist pain is to have different projects using different hook sizes, like a big range, like from a 19 to a 5.5. And then I also like to switch between grips. So I'll use a knife grip and then I'll use a pencil grip. So those tend to help. And then obviously stretching and just taking breaks. But I'm glad to hear that you're taking a break if you need it, because that I think that can be one of the hardest things for anyone who's a creative person to actually take breaks. Um, and I don't know if you have other creative outlets that you can work on. You know, usually if I have to take a break from crocheting, I'll do something else. You know, I'll work on procreate and drawing and things like that that um, are a very different movement for my wrists and hands. And that tends to help a lot. Emma says, I'm stash busting, making headbands, lots and lots of headbands. I've been there. Uh, that and fingerless gloves. Fingerless gloves were a really good one for stash busting, um, especially when I was doing craft shows. Uh, that and like my coffee cat cozies, those were a big one because it was just a small project so I could get through some of the cotton yarn that I'd been hoarding. Do you do craft shows? So like, are your headbands for craft shows? Are you donating them? Are you selling them online? Um, because I know now it's really hard for me to stash bust because I'm not selling my finished products currently. Um, I have nowhere to sell them. I, I'm hoping that I can get to a point where I feel comfortable going to shows again and find, even if it's just one show a year uh, here in Alabama to go to, I think that would be really nice because I have, not kidding, at least three full Tupperware bins of finished scarves, hats, headbands, and fingerless gloves. And I can't do anything with them. Um, I had them listed on Etsy the last two holidays um, for online sales. And I think I sold like two or three things in two years of finished objects. So it's harder to stash bus now. Um, I am going to start trying to make more of my own patterns as marketing. So like doing this crochet along, I already have a Dobby, but I made the Dobby cardigan uh, two years ago and I still only have one. So anytime I want to talk about it or market it or share it on social media, um, it's the same one, you know, so I think it'll be nice to start making duplicates of some of my own patterns so that I can just keep sharing them, show them in different yarn, uh, show them in different colors during different seasons with different yarn types. And I think that that's where the stash busting will come in. So, you know, I, I think I have three Luna cardigans, uh, but I only have one Trelawney cardigan. I only have one Granger cardigan, you know, so those are ones that I could revisit and make them uh, with some of the stash that I've got left over from back when I was doing craft shows. So that's my goal. That's my plan. And Sindra's working on the mini puff test. Yes, Sindra, and thank you so much for your feedback. I hope you guys know you know, my tests, and 
I've always wanted to make sure that my designs get tested, you know, because there have definitely been times when I send my patterns out and I realize very quickly that I screwed up the sizing or something and the testers catch it, you know, so I want my patterns and, and my patterns aren't cheap. You know, I mean, there are patterns out there that you can buy for three to five dollars. Most of mine are, my wearables are about seven dollars. I think now with the Etsy price increase, they're seven dollars and eleven cents. Um, but I want that to be worth it. I want you guys to know that they are, you know, very well tested and that I take feedback from my testers. Um, you know, I feel like they're part of the design team, you know. There are changes that I'm going to be making to the size that Syndra is testing um, based on her feedback on the fit, you know, so uh, thankfully she let me know like, hey, I don't know if this fits the way that it's supposed to. And I was able to work with her and say, okay, well, let's do let's do something different. Let's let's make this um, look the way that it needs to. Let's make it fit because I want people I want my garments to be items that you guys are actually going to wear because I hear that all the time. People will make things like, you know, I'm gonna make a sweater for myself. I'm gonna make myself a cardigan. Um, they feel extremely proud that they made it. And, you know, uh, it's not that they regret making it, but they don't wear it. They don't wear it out the house. And I wanna make patterns that you guys actually wanna wear out of the house. You wanna wear it around. You wanna be happy that it fits. You don't, you're not adjusting it all day, messing with it. Um, and it takes a really great team of testers to do that the right way, you know, to make sure that it's not just going to fit my body type, that it's going to, anyone who makes it is going to equally enjoy the design. So thank you so much, Sindra. And I got a couple people on here who are testers for me. Um, I don't know who all's watching, but my lovely admin Ellen has been testing for me now for quite some time. And I hope you guys know, um, I've had a lot of people who've started their testing journey with my wearables. So if you've ever thought of becoming a pattern tester, but maybe you're nervous and you don't really know where to start, um, reach out to me the next time I do a testing call because I would love to have you try, you know, and maybe you try it and realize it's not for you. Um, but I think it's a great way to grow your community because you're going to meet all of these other lovely pattern testers. You can connect with them on social media. You can make new friends. Um, I know a lot of people who became pattern testers because they didn't make themselves anything. And being a pattern tester allows you to make it for yourself, you know, and maybe you do still sell it, you know. Um, but if you're one of those people who says, man, I wish I would just take some time to make something for me for once. Sometimes pattern testing is a great way to do that because most of the designers want you to make it for yourself because they need to see it photographed on you. They need to see the fit um, on your body type. And so, you know, unless you make it for someone in your direct family who's then going to model it for them, you know, once you get done, um, there's no reason not to make it for you and keep it and love it. So... And I pattern tested a few times before I started really designing and it was enjoyable. You know, you feel like you're, you're making a difference. You're helping someone be even more successful, you know, and I think that's, I think that's great. Okay. So here we are. I just wanted to show you guys my progress on my sleeve. I am on row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I am on row eight. So that's nice. Okay, I'll keep going. I feel like my, um, I think my tension got a little bit smaller on here. I may be pulling these a little tight. So I'm gonna try to loosen my, loosen my tension up a little bit. I know I'm not the only one who, when you start to get talking and having conversations or you really get into it, that your, um, your tension will change, whether it gets looser or tighter, uh, but it definitely happens to me for sure. How much time we got? Oh, we're only at 34 minutes. What else is everyone working on? I still only heard a few people. Cinder said you should have it by Friday. Awesome. Ellen is working on a chunky blanket for a friend. Double stranded paint box, simply super chunky with a 17 millimeter pink sheep hook. 
Yes. That's awesome. Uh, we will be releasing new hooks this month. Um, it's going to be a little later. We fell behind. We've, we've had a lot of stuff going on the last couple of weeks and not just business stuff. It's just been personal stuff, family stuff, neighbor stuff. Like it's been a lot. Um, and then I've been trying to continue to update my Etsy shop. I've gotten a lot more apparel added to the Etsy shop and adding apparel to the Etsy shop is a whole process in itself because I have to create the listing with the actual printer and then that syncs with Etsy and then I have to make the graphics and do the listings and all the description info and the keywords and all that crazy fun stuff. So there's a lot more apparel in the Etsy shop and the really the only plus side of ordering apparel from my Etsy shop versus my bonfire shop is you're going to get it faster. So um, you may not have as many options for the items. You may not have as many colors to choose from. It really just depends. But if you order it from Etsy, most likely you're going to get it quite a bit faster than you would if you order through Bonfire. So that's the plus side. And I get a lot of new people like discovering me on Etsy and they wouldn't know that I had a bonfire. So I wanted to have an option on there where people could kind of see some of the apparel options that I make. Uh, and then they will have the option, you know, to go to bonfire the next time they order if they want to. But we have, what was I going to say? We're releasing hooks. We are out of 10 millimeter and 15 millimeter hooks in the shop right now. But when we do this month's release, we will have more. So we will have um, a bunch of 10s that are being released. We'll have 15s. We're also going to do a filler release this month, which is um, we look at the hook sizes that we've been running out of most often, which right now has been 10 millimeter, 15 millimeter, and 16 millimeter hooks that we tend to run out of the fastest. Um, and so we made a whole bunch of blue ombre um, in those sizes. It's like some of them are like a robin's egg blue. Some of them are a fade from light blue to dark blue. Some of them are a darker blue. Um, and then we used um, some really pretty blue holographic glitter on those. And they are just waiting for their second coat of resin. But we are going to be releasing those this month too. So if you are a big fan of blue uh, and you need to fill in some gaps in your collection, if you need a 10 or a 15 or a 16 millimeter, those will be releasing uh, when we release the new color this month. So um, that'll be good. And this month is a big release. Uh, we, we tried to do, I did, usually I only do like one or two 25 millimeters, but I think we did three because we're down to one 25 millimeter hook in the shop. Um, so yeah, we tried to really look at what's been running out and we're really trying to get our stock up because one of the big things that I wanted to make sure that we focused on um, was not being sold out of things. Because I know as a maker and as a crocheter, I would get frustrated when I would find something I really liked. Like I would find someone who made really cool hooks or hook handles or something, but they never had anything in stock. You know, they would do, they would do like a release. And then if you don't get the hook into your cart and purchased within like five seconds, they're gone, <laughs> you know, and you never have the opportunity to purchase it unless you have, you know, an alarm set. And so, um, I didn't want it to be that way with our hooks. I always want there to be options for sizes. Now we may not have all, you know, we may not have a lot of options, but we're going to have the size. So if you needed a 10 millimeter and you wanted one from us that we would have it in stock. And um, we've really struggled to keep those tens in stock. So um, we're probably gonna be releasing more, more tens with each color release than we used to, to try to help with that because I don't wanna be out of stock in sizes. So working on that. Business goals. Okay. Winter Nightmare says I do cross stitch to but this is a do nothing at all kind of pain. Ugh! so I decided it was best to stop using it until it gets better. Super smart, best thing you could do. Um, I would do some icing to get the inflammation down. That's always super helpful. Um, 
and just do, you know, do your stretches and things like that. And I think that'll help. But yeah, taking a break is sometimes, it's just necessary. And I think a lot of us, we ignore our bodies when they tell us to stop. And then you get to a point where, like you said, it's do nothing pain. You know, it's not just don't crochet pain. It's like your body is saying, no, you're going to rest and I'm going to make you. But I hope you feel better. I hope that the, having a break helps. I know when I used to do markets and I would stay up all night, you know, you would, you would literally pull all nighters. It was like, I was back in college, you know, uh, studying for an exam, cramming for an exam. And I would stay up to like three and four in the morning when I had a market the next day at seven or eight o'clock, uh, because I wanted to have plenty of inventory and maybe I sold out of things faster than I thought I would at the market. Um, but I would have to take weeks. I would take two or three weeks off from crocheting because I had to. Um, I don't want to end up having to get surgery for carpal tunnel. Um, you know, so it's definitely listening to our bodies and stopping when they tell us to. Okay, I got to do a recount because I feel like my sleeve's getting smaller. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely left a stitch out somewhere, so I'm adding one back. I'm just doing an increase in that last stitch. I wonder where I missed that. Hopefully it wasn't too long, but I did feel like my sleeve was, was slowly getting smaller. <laughs> but the Dobby's not supposed to have super oversized sleeves either. Um, you know, so if you, if you want them to be more oversized, I always tell people to follow the instructions for the next size up for their sleeves. Uh, so leave a larger opening and then follow the stitch count for the next size up and that'll give you a bigger sleeve. I think someone actually did that with the mini puff test. Um, they followed the next size up because I had that listed in the pattern as an option. Um, okay, this is going to drive me crazy. So I'm going to need to put, I got this huge yarn bowl that my grandmother got me a long time ago. Um, it's got a whole bunch of stuff in there. I'm going to pour that out. Okay, and I'm going to put... This guy, since I'm pulling from the outside in here, so that I can pull on it easier. Because it was about to fly off the table if I didn't do something different. There we go. That's better. Sorry, I've been shaking the camera. Let's see. Oh, and Cindra said, um, it's much better now. Uh, said, plus I'm a big girl and nothing ever fits that I make. Well, I hope that because Cindra has now tested for me. How many times, Cindra? Is this your third test for me, the mini puff? And yours have turned out beautiful. And, and I hope, you know, and please note, you can always be honest with me. If there's things that you have made for me and you're like, mm, this is not, I'm never going to wear it, you know. Um, but letting me know if things fit and if you like them, because I can't remember, I think you made the winky jacket, the power and the power puff. Um, but they turned out great. Like they fit beautifully, you know, I mean, at least from, from me looking at your photos, you know, um, whether you felt confident in them or not, I think that's always more of a personal thing. There are things I'm sure that people think look cute on me. And I said, I'm not going to wear that. Um, but I hope that you've had a good experience with the past ones. And yes, three. Winter said, I love my new hooks a lot, by the way. The purple glittery hook is so gorgeous. I keep staring at it. I'm so glad. That makes me so happy. Um, and I hope you guys know, I don't know if you got one of the ones that was discounted because you said purple. Uh, no, you that you got one of the new ones, yeah? One of the new Cosmos hooks, because those are like hypnotizingly glittery because of that mica powder. Um, but I hope you guys know, if, if you guys have been looking at our hooks, I know that our hooks are an investment. Um, and one of the main reasons that we have not done a sale is because we have struggled to keep them in stock. So if we do get to a point where um, we are able to keep up the stock. Um, like for instance, once you buy one of our hooks, you're in the hook club and you'll get special discounts and things like that. So one time I did a sale on 
just the 11 millimeter hooks in our shop because they were the only ones that we had a really good number of hooks. Um, so we were able to do a sale. So as we continue to build our inventory and, you know, release the different colors, um, usually once a hook has been in the shop, you know, for quite a few months, I'll knock the price down a little bit. So I'll take it from 45 to 40 and then from 40 to 35, you know, as it continues to sit in the shop. Um, but those will usually get snapped up. I think we might have a few that are still $35 in the shop that you guys can check out. Um, I can't remember if they've sold yet or not, but they would be just a purple, an old purple glitter hook, not the new um, Cosmos hooks. And Ellen says, you're so right, Winter. They are so sparkly and fun, fun to look at. Uh, Sandra, it didn't take long to get my shirt from Bonfire. I'm really glad to hear that. Um, I try to do the Bonfire campaigns at five days. So they're open for five days and you can purchase during that time. And then after five days are up, the campaign closes and they um, process all of those orders. But every now and then, for some reason, it reverts to 14 days. So sometimes you'll buy a shirt and the campaign doesn't close for another almost two weeks. And then, and then they process the order. So that can take a lot longer, but if you have patience, like I don't, then Bonfire really is great. It really, you know, they've got great customer service. If there's, if anything happens with your order, they're really great about replacing things. Um, so that's, that's really nice. And it's less for me to handle because they manage the customer service. If something goes wrong with an order placed through Etsy, I have to manage all of that customer service. So, you know, that can be a drag, but it just takes longer to um, make it right if it's on Etsy because I have to go through the printer and they have to get back to me. Then I got to go back to Etsy and, you know, more, more steps in the process. And winter, yes, got one of the new ones. Lita says she loves the Cosmos hook uh, and she just got out of a meeting. I'm glad you're able to make it too. It makes me happy that you're here. And I was asking everyone what they're working on. So if you guys have just popped in, let me know what you're working on. It doesn't have to be what you're working on right this second because some of you guys may be at work uh, listening in. Um, but what is your, what are some of your current projects that you're working on uh, that are in your queue? Emma says, I got the opportunity to work with Bernat Bliss yarn last week. Um, so soft and squishy. I have not tried that. Is that the one that has the different textures? Uh, what is the Bliss yarn and what weight is that? Is that a lighter weight yarn? Because I don't think I've, if I've heard of it, I just haven't seen it yet. Sandra says, I liked the Powerpuff jacket, but it was way too heavy for here in El Paso. I'm loving the mini puff. I feel you on the, uh, the Powerpuff. It is definitely um, a winter jacket. And that was my goal because I feel like um, I don't see a lot of that with crochet. I feel like crochet was really more known for the lighter weight, airy summer type of projects. Um, and I have always been very inspired by the chunky knitwear and knitting patterns. And so I really wanted to try to create something different with crochet that I wasn't used to seeing. Um, and I get very, very cold. And even being in Alabama with the crazy weather, um, there are times when I really have to layer up to feel like I'm warm enough. And so the power puff for me was perfect because I'll wear a hoodie or a sweatshirt and I'll layer that over it for the extra warmth. <laughs> But I see why it would be way too hot where you are. And I would not feel bad if you frogged it and made something else like a blanket or, you know, I don't know, something with your blanket yarn. Um, but yeah, it was uh, definitely a choice. But I, I'm so appreciative of you being willing to test it because, you know, even if it's not something that would have normally been in your wardrobe, um, just knowing that that size is right now, it just makes me feel so much better about putting my patterns out there when I know that every size has been tested. 
I don't think that I ended up with a 3X, 4X tester for the mini puff, which I don't know how I missed that. I thought that I had every single size. I don't know if someone dropped out and I didn't realize it, um, but I almost have all of those sizes tested. Okay, let me do a quick check and count, count where I'm at. See, now I have 27 stitches around. <laughs> Ugh. Can you guys see how this is like going in and out? I'm going to have to frog this back. So because the sleeves, I'm having to pay more attention to these, I do think that I am probably going to work on work on the sleeves outside of my lives and come back once I'm to the point where I decrease. So in between this video and the next one, I'll probably um, do this one. I'll probably start the other sleeve and I'll be at the cuffs. So I'll show the decrease on the next one because I have somehow jacked these up. And um, I don't think it's going to be awful, but I mean, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. See, that's 26, but this one's 20, this has 27. Where did I do? Okay, so that's where I did the increase. I'm going to have to do this again. Oh, y'all. This, this is, this is crocheting, right, though? Like, this is real life. <laughs> okay, let's see if this one had 27. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, Yeah, see, I had 27 there. Okay, that's where I messed up because I had gotten back up to 26, had 26 here, and then I added an extra there when I should have stopped. Okay, so now I'm back to 26. Whew. It is just proof that no matter how long you've been doing this, it's difficult to crochet and talk at the same time and not screw something up, even when the pattern's easy. Y'all can see that dip though, like it gets a little bit smaller right in here because I had somehow gotten down to 25 stitches instead of 26 and then increased to 27. But yeah, I'll probably finish this sleeve and that's what I was going to look at. Um, I am supposed to do 29 rows before I do a decrease. So um, I'm on row, oh, let's see, one, two, three. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There, I'm on row 14. So I've got a ways to go. So yeah, I think I'm going to do what I can on here because I'm, oh yeah, we're pushing it. We're at 58 minutes. I try to, I try not to stay on for longer than an hour. Um, so I'll finish this row and then I will give you guys a sneak peek before I go uh, of the new yarn that I got. Um, but I am, I'm going to finish this sleeve um, before I come on the next video. I'm going to get to row 29 and then row 30 is where we do the decreases. So I will show that on the video. And then on the last video, um, I'll work on the last sleeve. So I'm hoping that the 10th video will be the last video <laughs> because this has been a long crochet along, but I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And you know, I don't know how many of you guys are actually following along, um, but I feel like this is a, a great playlist to have on my channel for people to go back and watch if they want to. Um, and obviously I like going live with you guys and hanging out. Um, you know, that's, that's a plus for me. Um, but the 10th video will be on Instagram. I don't have an interview this Friday. So this Friday on Instagram, I will do part 10 of the Dobby cardigan um, at 12 p.m. Central Time this Friday. So we should be finishing up then. And I didn't count there. I'm trying to count to make sure. Okay, 26. And then I join. And I'll be on to row 15. So yeah, so I'm going to finish up this sleeve. I will try this on so you guys can see how it's looking with the sleeve. 
Um, and then I'm going to show you guys the yarn and I'll show you another new project that I just finished. So let me actually lift that up a little bit. Okay. Because that's not going to fit over this. Okay. So put it on this way. Oh, that's the hood, not a sleeve. There's the other side. Okay. All right. So this is what we're looking like. And yeah, I mean, that's making it, you're not, I'm, I'm not going to be able to tell that I, I, um, made it a little, a little smaller right here. Um, and you can see these sleeves are not the big balloon type sleeves that you see on like the Luna cardigan. It's definitely smaller. Um, but I think that looks pretty nice. And then I'll, uh, yeah, when we come back for part 10, I will probably work all of these down. And since I showed you guys how to join here, I may go ahead and start this sleeve and work it down too, so that on the 10th one, I'll be working on the decreases. Um, and then we will actually be finished. I can weave in the ends. But, um, and let's see if I move this forward, we'll put the hood up. And that's what the hood looks like. And I think I stopped early. Uh, if I remember correctly, I did not do um, all of the front border rows that I could have done because I wanted to see how that would look. But this is the small slash medium. So if you see, I usually wear the extra small, small. And if I wrap this one around and I don't pull it tight, I can cross that over quite a bit. So I could have probably gone with the extra small slash small. Um, but I think that's nice. I think it looks good. And you can see back here where I did the, um, the decreases because that kind of pulls under a little bit and that's, you know, you don't have to do that. Okay. So I want to show you guys, um, if you guys saw my zipper jacket, I have made another one of that jacket style. This is the Angelica jacket. And this one I made using, let me see if I still have, I think I threw it away. shoot. Well, I think I threw away the actual yarn holder, but I used Premier Cotton XL. So they still sell it on their website. I think Hirschner's is having a sale on it right now. Um, but you can see up close, this is what it looks like. It is almost like ribbon yarn in a way. Let me see. I have a scrap of it somewhere that I can show you guys. Let's see. <coughs> Here you go. Okay. This is what it looks like up close. So you can see it's um, almost like an I cord in a way, but it's skinny and then it's a little bit fatter if you turn it this way. So it's almost like ribbon yarn in that way. Um, pretty soft. This was the light orange and white color that they sell. And then I mixed it with the pink. So they had a pink marled color. I think they call it marled. M-A-R-L-E-D. And this one, like I said, this one, I just started the test for this one. So everybody is just now getting started. Um, this is what it looks like without a zipper. So the only thing I do kind of, it was a struggle to figure out how to make the collar be more of like a forward facing collar. Um, when I washed the other one, it shrunk down a little bit and the collar was at a different location. Um, like it actually was a little more forward. Um, this one, instead of three front border rows across here, I did a third, I did a uh, two. So I made this one shorter because I don't plan on washing this one to try to shrink it. Um, and then when I add a zipper, you guys can see if I hold it here and have it zip, have it you know, zip like this, it gives it more of that jacket shape like that. But I don't mind it without the zipper either. Let me move back a little bit so you guys can see a little better. Um, I think it's a really, it's a different shape and that's what I wanted. I wanted to do something different. The sleeves look different. The entire shape of the jacket is very different from anything I've done. Um, but that was my goal because 
you know, I, I want to make sure that I have versatility with my designs and they don't all look exactly the same. Um, I probably will still add a zipper because I do, I do think that that's really fun to have the zippered pieces. And then I believe that at least one of my testers, maybe Ellen, is going to try to extend the sleeve a little bit more. So we'll be able to see what that looks like. But I had never made anything that had the sleeve hit here. So I wanted to try that out. Um, this is definitely a softer, drapier feel than the other one that I made. So that's cool. And I definitely got the gauge. So that was nice. Um, and you can see where I switched. Uh, I worked my front panel. And then the top uh, pieces of my front panel were this color. And then I did the sleeves uh, in that color. So super fun. Really happy with how it turned out. And I will give you guys a quick showcase of the new yarn that I got before I go. Okay. Get all this off the show. Can y'all see me over here? Okay, you can. <laughs> okay. Right. This is heavy yarn. All right. So this is the first one. It is actually Garfield. See Garfield's face. So it's a red textile with the Garfield. And this one I got three. I got three of these. So don't know what I'm going to do with them yet. I got one of the pink Garfield. So you can see it's also a pink, pink style. Uh, but I only got one of these, so I'm not sure. Again, they sent me this one because um, my mom's my mom loved Garfield, and then it's pink, and I told them it was super special, and I thought it would be really fun to have a story behind it. Um, so they sent me this one just because they said we thought it was really cool that you had that story, even though there's only one. You're not going to be able to make much. And then this is the other one that they sent. So this is like paint splatter. And yes, Emma says the Garfield screams bag. I definitely will probably make a bag out of at least one of these. Um, I'm thinking I may make my Mariner crossbody bag out of this one. I think I have enough to make the Mariner. Um, and I'm pretty sure that these two will, whoop, these two, I'll probably do maybe a bag, but I may do another wearable um, and try, try, because it's such a challenge for me. I, I think it's really fun to try to make the wearables out of these. Um, because again, that's not what they're meant for. So it's, it's a challenge. Okay, the other thing that I got same brand, they sent all of this together um, is hooked ribbon yarn. So I got the neon colors, which are really fun. And these are a cotton polyester blend. So those are the new ones. And those would be fun for the backpack. Yes, I agree. I may make a backpack out of one of these. I think that's a really smart idea. I need to see how much yardage I used for that. And the last thing that I've done, because I've never done this before, is um, I used one of our Lucid forks and I made my own I-cord out of some scrap cotton that I had. So I don't know what I use with it because it's really, really thick. I mean, this would be a size seven yarn. So I'll probably use a 25 millimeter hook or larger, but I don't know what I'm going to make out of it. Um, but I was really proud of that. We do still have a few lucets in the shop. So if you've never tried a lucet, I need to make a video on how I used ours. Um, but that was really fun. All right, guys, I need to run for now, but I will see you guys on Friday when I go live on Instagram, uh, for part 10, hopefully the last part of the Dobby cardigan. Um, yes, yeah, Cinder said you need to do a tutorial. I will definitely do a tutorial. It's on my list. Um, and be on the lookout. I'm about to release a video on how I make my slippers. So the simple slippers, the patterns in my Etsy shop, but I wanted to make a video since it's a shorter one. It was easier for me to film. Uh, that should be coming out this week or next week. And yeah. All right, guys, I hope you have a good rest of your week and I'll see you next time. Happy hooking.